Hi there. So today we're going to do some practice uh, using the tangent ratio. Um, so I just want to remind you, uh, remember the tangent ratio of angle A is the ratio of the opposite side, BC, to the adjacent side, AB. Okay. So notice if I keep the, tr the angle the same and I change the sides, that ratio stays the same. Okay. So I change the triangle, but keeping the angle the same, means the ratio stays the same. As soon as I change the angle, the ratio changes. But keeping the angle the same keeps the ratio the same. So that means if I know this ratio, and I know this side, then I can easily figure out that side, or vice versa. All right? So knowing the tangent ratio of each angle helps us a lot, and our calculator ha actually has all the possible tangent ratios stored. Okay, so that's what we're going to work on using today. So make sure you have your scientific calculator right by your side. Um, and let's just review. So the tangent ratio between this, the, the tangent ratio of an angle in a right angle triangle is the ratio between the side opposite of the angle and the side adjacent to the angle. So what that means is here's the reference angle. This is the side opposite and this is the side adjacent, right? So that means that we can write tangent of that angle alpha is equal to opposite over adjacent, okay? So here we go. So we wanna calculate the tangent ratio for each of these acute angles, okay? So the first thing I wanna do, since there's no names, I wanna name the angles A, B, C, okay? So A is not an acute angle, it's a 90 degree angle. So first let's find the tangent of angle B, okay? So remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of B is opposite over adjacent. So that'll be 18 over 34. And all we can do is simplify that a little bit. So it's nine over 17. Okay, so the tangent of angle B is 9 over 17. Okay, on the other hand, the tangent of angle C is opposite over adjacent. So 34 over 18. So that's 17 over 9. Okay, so to figure out the tangent ratio, all you have to do is write the ratio between the opposite side and the adjacent side. Okay. All right. So a more useful thing that we're going to do is we're going to be able to calculate the length of side y. There's y. Okay. So uh, to do this, we need to know I have an angle here, right? So that's going to be useful. And y is the side opposite. 12 is the side adjacent. And I know that the relationship is that the tan of 26 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent, okay? So remember, my, my goal is to solve for y. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to multiply across by 12. So this will be 12 times the tangent of 26, and that's gonna be y, okay? So this is true, but we would like to get an actual number. So what we do is we look at our scientific calculator and we input that we want the tan of 26 degrees. So on my calculator, I have to input 26 first and then hit tan. And the uh, result is 0 0.4877, okay? So I wanna keep it to two decimal places. So that means that this is gonna be 12 times and tan 26 was 0 0.49. Okay, so now the last thing that I have to do is actually multiply and say um, 12 times 0 0.49, and there's my answer, 5.88, okay? So knowing the angle and the adjacent side, let me figure out the side opposite. 
Okay. So all I did was I remembered that the tan of an angle is the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Wrote that down, did my cross multiplication, figured out what tan 26 is, and there's my answer. Okay. All right, so let's look at one more type of problem. We want to calculate the size of angle X. Okay, so in this case, so here's my angle X. Okay, so right away, let's locate the opposite and the adjacent. So this side right here is the hypotenuse, right? It's the longest one, and it's also the one that the right angle points at. Okay, so that means that the side that the the side that's opposite is 3, so that's opposite. And the side that's adjacent is 4. Okay. So what I know right now is that tan x degrees, whatever that is, is equal to opposite over adjacent. Okay, so first let's turn that into a decimal and then we'll see what we're going to do with it. Okay, so 10x is 0 0.75. Okay, now if I knew the x value, then I could just do 10 of that value and I'll get the answer. But in this case, I know the answer. So there's another button on our calculator which is going to help us do that. Now on your calculator, um, you're going to have a button that says second F, which means second function. Some of you might have a button that says shift. I've got a button that says INV, which is inverse. Okay. So when I click that button, my tan changes to a tan with a little negative one at the top. Okay. So that means tan inverse. So that means instead of knowing the angle, if I know the answer, how do I get from the answer to the angle? Well, I'm going to use tan inverse, okay? So what you guys are probably going to do is you're going to hit shift tan, or you're going to hit second function tan. So you'll have to play around and see what works. But all I have to do is input 0 0.75 and hit my tan inverse button. And that's what the x value is. So x is 36.87. Okay, so that's that. And now I can double check my answer by going to my calculator, inputting 36.87, click 10, and there's my 0.75. Okay, so if I know the angle, I'm going to use 10. If I don't know the angle, but I know the answer, I'm going to use 10 inverse. All right, so that's that. Uh, make sure you watch the video again if you need to, and I'll see you in class.